The Day Goko Went to Vote, written by Dr. Elinor Sosuru and illustrated by Sharon Wilson. My Goko is very, very old. When I ask her how old she is, she says, I am older than this township. When I was born, there were no cars or airplanes. When I ask her if she is older than Dada Nelson Mandela, she laughs and says, Mandela is a young man compared to me. When I come home from school, my mother and father are still at work, so Goko takes care of me. Goko calls me her little tail because I follow her everywhere. She lets me carry her beautiful blue cloth bag in which she keeps important things. Sometimes she tells me to open it, and I find sweets inside. When my front teeth fell out, she put them in the bag. The next morning, she told me to look inside. My teeth had disappeared. Instead, there was a two-rand coin inside. I took the money and bought a pair of pink earrings. Because she was born in the olden days, Goko knows a lot about things that happened a long time ago. She tells me many stories that her Goko told her about how our ancestors lived before the white people came. She also tells me about the place where our family came from and how we are all related to each other. One day, my father and mother came home from work very excited because all the main political parties had agreed to the election dates for a new government. Father explained that April 26, 1994 would be a special voting day for old people and those who were very sick. Everyone else would vote on April 27 and 28. Those two days would be holidays and people would not have to go to work. Good! I will vote with the other old people on April 26, announced Goko. We were all shocked when Goko said this because she never goes out of the yard. The last time Goko went out, it was a long time ago, before I even started school. It was when my father took her to the pension's office. When they came back, Goko was very sick, and father was very angry. He told mother how they'd had to stand in a long line of people for many hours, and the man at the office had shouted at Goko. When she heard the story, mother cried. They should not treat our elders like that, she said. After that, Goko stayed in her room for many days. My heart was sore because mother would not let me go into her room. Goko cannot tell you stories because she is very sick, she would say. Goko is better now, but she never goes out of the yard anymore. She will not even go to church. The priest has to come to our house to pray with her. That is why we were so surprised when Goko said she wanted to vote. We cannot take you to vote on April 26 because we will be at work, said Father. Then I will vote with you on the 27th, said Gok. How will you get to the polling booth? Father asked Gok. The same way you will go there, replied Gok. But we are going by bus. We cannot have you traveling on a crowded bus. The buses may even be too full on that day, and we may have to walk. Besides, said Mother, there will be long lines of people at the polling station and you will not be able to stand in the lines. Mother and Father asked my uncles and aunts to help them try to tell Goko she could not go to vote, but Goko refused to listen. You want me to die not having voted? she asked. Our neighbor Mam Lambo came to the fence to ask why all the family was gathered at our house. While father and mother were talking to her, I asked Goko why she wanted to vote so much. I was worried something bad would happen, like the time she went to the pension's office. Goko told me, Tembi, 
Black people in South Africa have fought for many years for the right to vote. This is the first time we have a chance to vote for our own leaders. And it might be my last. That is why I must vote. No matter how many miles I have to walk. No matter how long I have to stand in line. Mamlambo told her uncle, Mr. Ramoshu, a rich man who owns many shops in the township, about Goku. Mr. Ramoshu sent a message to father saying that he would send his own car and driver to take Goku to vote. I asked mother and father if I could come along. At first they said I was too little, but Goku told them I must be there to help her carry her blue bag. Soon, it was time for the elections. The night before, we were all so excited we couldn't sleep. Early on the morning of April 27, we dressed in our best clothes. We were waiting eagerly when Mr. Ramushu's big, shiny car stopped in front of our small house. As we helped Goko to the car, all our neighbors came out onto the street. They were cheering. The driver opened the car door for us. My friends shouted, Look at Tandy in a Benz! I pretended not to see them. I looked straight in front. I was going to help Goko vote. I had no time to laugh and talk to them. There were many people lined up to vote at the polling booth. The crowd had to move to let the car go through. Mr. Ramushu had told the voting people about Gok, so they were waiting for her. They said she should not stand in line. A woman called the presiding officer guided us into the voting office. Goko showed her identity book to the voting officers. They then put Goko's hand under a machine I asked them what it was for. It is an ultraviolet machine, explained the presiding officer. It is against the law to vote twice. This machine helps us make sure that each person votes only once. Look at your Goko's hands through the glass in front. You cannot see anything on our hands. Now, when we put this colorless liquid on Goko's hand and put them under the machine for a second time, what do you see? Her hands look blue. Why is that? I asked. Because the liquid is invisible ink, you can only see it under this machine. It cannot be washed off and will fade away only after three days. By that time, the elections will be over. So, if Goko tries to vote at another polling booth in the next three days, I said, her hands will show blue under the machine and they will know that she already voted. So that's how you tell. They then gave Goko a ballot paper to take into the voting booth. I wanted to cry when they told me I could not go with Goko into the voting booth. But Goko hugged me and said, Tandy, please hold my bag for me while I vote. Why can't I go with Goko? I asked. Because no one should know who she is voting for. The officer said. But I already know who she's voting for, I said. Shh, it is a secret ballot. That means you must not tell anyone, they said. Mother told me to stop asking so many questions. The voting officers laughed and said I have to ask questions so I will be prepared to vote by the time I am 18 years old. When Goko came out of the voting booth, she put her ballot paper into a box with an opening on top, like a money box. Some people with big cameras that flash bright lights took pictures of her. Then they took a picture of Goko and me together. Goko looked tired, but she smiled and held my hand tightly. All the people in the room stood up and clapped for a long time. Mother told me they were clapping for Goko because she was the oldest voter in our township. 
mother and father were crying. I cried too. I don't know why, because I was very happy. When we got home in Mr. Ramushu's beautiful car, our yard was full of neighbors and relatives. My aunt Sophie had cooked omimosha, and Mam Lambo brought a huge pail of ikhemer. While we were eating, some of my uncles argued about who would win the elections. They became quite angry because they had voted for different parties. Be silent, my father told them. Let us not worry about that now. The important thing is that we can vote, and Goko has led the way. Everyone began to sing freedom songs and dance. They danced so much, no one remembered to send me to bed. I danced the doi doi with my older cousins until our feet were sore. When we were too tired to go on, we all sang our national anthem, Osi Sigelela i Afrika and crawled into our beds. The next day, there was a picture of Goko and me in the newspaper. My cousins read aloud the words above the picture. The past and the future. Hundred-year-old voter, Mrs. M. Mokwena, accompanied by six-year-old great-granddaughter, Tendi. We felt very proud and important. The whole township celebrated after the elections. When Mr. Nelson Mandela became president of the country, people danced and sang in the streets all day and all night. There were many parties, and we all enjoyed ourselves. But for me, the best day was when Goko went to vote. The end.